Good evening. If I press this panic button, it makes us see red. If I would close some certain door, for instance, we would see this blue light. And if I would open the door, we'd see green light. Listening for broadcasts that come from this wireless panic button and controlling of this multicolor LED are both done using the splendid new features of the serial buses that the ESP32 microcontroller has. The great new possibilities of those serial buses are our topic today. This LowPi is one of the ESP32 development boards. Let's open this plastic enclosure, one plastic bag, a sticky tape, these RF shields and these plastic bases around the annoyingly short pin headers. And this is my old Note MCU version 0.9. I here disable its microcontroller by connecting its chip hold power down pin down to the ground because I want that the old microcontroller won't disturb us this evening. But I do use the rest of the Note MCU as an excellent USB to serial converter for our new ESP32 microcontrollers. The connections that are needed are quite similar to those that we made in the video number 7. At the GPIO0 pin of the ESP32 microcontroller there is this addressable NeoPixel LED that starts blinking as I now connect the USB cable and power up the system. If I add to that same GPIO line an ordinary LED, nothing special happens, as the NeoPixel is being toggled quite seldom and by extremely short bursts of serial communication. If I upload and run this ordinary blink program, we see that now my ordinary LED blinks, but the NeoPixel doesn't illuminate anymore. Let's make that NeoPixel blink again. From the datasheet of the WS2812B, we learn that the bursts of information that control these NeoPixels consist of 8 bits for the green component of light, another 8 bits for the red component of light, and finally 8 bits for the blue component of light, where the first bits are the most significant ones. We will indicate the beginning of our message by keeping our GPIO0 low for at least 50 microseconds and then by making a rising edge to the signal. All those mentioned bits last for about 1.25 microseconds or in other words 1250 nanoseconds and that would already mean 800 thousand bits per second. But on the top of that all those 1.25 microsecond periods of time are further divided into three parts. During the first one third the signal is always high. The middle third is coding the bits 1 and 0 in the usual manner and during the last third the signal is always low. So, we must hurry during those 1.25 microseconds to toggle the GPIO0 pin for three times. That means a rate of 2.4 million actions per second, or in other words, that means writing new bits to the GPIO0 pin after every 470 nanoseconds. Our conventional Arduino IDE programs can't run that fast. With an assembly language program we could make it work. And we can make it work by modifying some of the hardware communication buses towards the needs of our NeoPixels. Today I am going to use the well-known TX pin of a UART serial communication bus for this task, because I want to show you some splendid features of these ESP32 microcontrollers. Look at this function that is given to our disposal.
we are allowed to have simultaneously three UART buses. The UART bus number one is right now used by the Arduino IDE's serial monitor. But the remaining UART buses number one and two are free for us to use. And with this function, we can write to their TX pins. UART clock runs here at speed of 80 MHz, so our need for the 2.4 MHz speed shouldn't be any problem for it. This configuration parameter is the same as we have at Arduino Uno. We use today this rarely used Serial 7N1 configuration that uses 7 data bits, doesn't use any parity bit and uses only one stop bit. So, in this configuration we would start the transmission by making a falling edge to our GPIO0 pin. As our transmission rate is at 2.4 MHz, our starting bit is to last for about 417 nanoseconds. Then we would write at 417 nanoseconds intervals all the intended 7 data bits, starting from the least significant bit. As a stop bit, we would set the GPIO0 to high for an extra 470 nanoseconds. And right after that, we could start writing some other 7 bits of new data to the GPIO0 line in a similar manner. The UART's start bit and stop bit disturb us here a little, as the NeoPixel doesn't need them. And another disturbing thing is that the standard UART transmission starts with a falling edge of a signal, but as we remember, our NeoPixel would need a rising edge. But we will soon overcome these both two difficulties. But first, the splendid thing. We are allowed to have UART RX and TX pins wherever we want. And as we are only going to write to a NeoPixel, the UART bus doesn't actually need any RX pin. And we can just attach that unnecessary RX function to some pin for a while and for the sake of appearance. But it is good to know that later in this program there would be no hinder to start using the same pin as an ordinary input-output pin for other purposes. But the TX signal is important for us now, and today we need to attach it to the GPIO0 pin. And as said, we don't intend to use the RX pin today, so we don't need to organize any buffer for its incoming data. And this last parameter asks if our GPIO0 should code the 1 bits to low and vice versa the 0 bits to high. And that is exactly what we need for our new pixels that are waiting for a rising and not for a falling edge of a signal to begin to start paying attention to our transmissions. I learned the fascinating next trick from the Raspberry Pi's NeoUART program and modified it here a little. Let's make an array where we replace these underscores with the numbers 0. Let's use this other function that was given to our disposal, run this program, see that NeoPixel is now on, and of course this kind of an array should be named as white. And in the similar manner, we can turn the NeoPixel off by replacing all the underscores with the numbers 1. If I change the status of this least significant bit B0, we see a very faint blue light. But if I change the status of this most significant bit B7, we see quite intensive blue light. And if I change the status of all the bits from B0 to B7, we get the brightest available blue light. The same is true for the green and for the red components of NeoPixel light. And as in the beginning of this video, we may combine any intensities of these three colors. For instance, if we combine green and red, we get yellow. 
What an excellent UART we have at our ESP32 microcontrollers. And now we proceed to the SPI buses. Maybe you remember that in the videos number 6 and 8 we couldn't use the ESP8266 hardware SPI pins for our radio modules and we had to make our own programs to handle those customized SPI connections. But with ESP32 we may return back to the well-known and easy SPI library because the big thing here is that at ESP32 we may freely choose for our hardware SPI buses any digital pins that we want. For instance here at this low pipe board the radio module's SPI bus happens to be connected to these non-standard pins. Naturally, we may have to take care of some extra signals that our SPI modules may desire. The protocol of the broadcasts that our panic button uses is relatively simple. This radio receiver program here is heavily commented and it is similar to those receiver programs that we had in the videos number 6 and 8. So, for deeper details, I encourage you to see also those videos and their descriptions. Thank you for the serial connection that we shared this evening. And do remember that in the discussion forums of these videos, our buses travel to both directions. Goodbye.